G'day guys and welcome back to me lab and to this very special edition of our Super Bogan Brothers tutorial series where we are going to make those question mark blocks that we can jump up to, bump them and they're going to spew out a power up for us. So let's have a look at what I am talking about. Now if you can't quite remember what I'm talking about here, let's have a quick look. So uh, let's get into our Godot game. Here is our Bogan. Um, and you can see now we've added in, or I've added in, this little question mark block, just like you would see in Super Mario Brothers. So if we jump up, it gets bumped, it goes up, it comes down, it changes state, and it spawns a little power up. Now you might have noticed that didn't look like a mushroom. No. This is a bogan. Bogans aren't in a mushrooms. Mushrooms are basically salad, right? So for our bogan, his power up is going to be a 4x stubby. I, I think that's uh, culturally appropriate. So let's have a look at how we are going to make this happen in your game. Alright, so the first thing I think we should do is make the question mark block itself. So we're going to make a scene for that. We're also going to make a scene for our uh, stubby of beer. Um, and we've got some scripts to do and things like that as well. But let's start at the start and let's have a look at our question mark block. Now, um, if you want this asset, you will be able to find it by the time I've uploaded this, uh, either on my itch.io or you can get the entire files and all that from the GitHub. Um, so you should be able to find those links in the description. But let's get started. So I am going to create a new scene. Hopefully you remember how to do that. We're going to hit that little plus sign. Um, and this scene, we're actually going to have the root node as an area 2D. So I am going to click on other node and then I'm going to search for area 2D. There it is. It comes up and I'm going to add that as my root node. But I don't want to leave it called area 2D. Remember, we always change these root nodes just to help us with our like naming conventions and we can find things more easily and we get less confused. So I'm going to rename this area 2D to question block why not um, so that gives us an area 2d now you might remember whenever we have an area 2d we get a warning this little warning sign uh, until the point we actually add a collision shape to it because as much as it's an area 2d it has no physical presence in the world until we add that collision shape so you can't actually interact with it without some sort of physical presence in the world so we can do that quite easily we're just going to click our plus next up here as well and then we just look for a collision shape enter there it is now let me just grab in my view here let's just get zoomed in a bit on what's going to be happening here and then we can actually think about doing collision shapes and things all right so let's add a uh, square uh, rectangle whatever collision shape to our um, to our game here oh I think I'm far too zoomed in Wowzers! all right there we go so here is our I'm just gonna move it up to the top because that's what I tend to do here is our collision shape for our question block which we have not yet given a sprite to right so that is gonna be our next thing so we're gonna click back on our question mark block root node we're gonna click the plus sign and we're just going to put in a sprite 2d now Sprite 2D will allow us to have those two different frames basically of our um, animation for this. So we've got a Sprite 2D there now. Um, I guess what we want to do is, is get that in that texture in. So what you're going to do now is you need to grab those assets. So make sure you've downloaded them and then we're just going to drag them in. So I'll do the same thing here as well. Uh, and it was called uh, question block or something like that. Oh, no. There it is, question block.png. I'm going to grab that drag it into my file explorer here. That then gets added, there it is there. So now I can drag it over and drop it into that texture. Now, there is a problem, right? So we've got two, um, two whole things showing. We don't actually need that. Now, if we click on our animation um, block there, see how it's got horizontal frames and vertical frames? Well, there is only one vertical frame, but we've actually made two horizontal frames. So I turn that to two, and then it sort of narrows it down. So now we've just got the one that we want showing. So that frame there with a question mark is our zero frame because it always starts at zero, one, two, three, etc. So we've got a two frame um, animation um, in terms of on the horizontal, um, only one on the vertical, and we want to start this on frame zero, which is our question mark. Now I'm going to drag that up so it sits nicely in there. Now this is our area 2D, right? And our area 2D, the, the collision shape that we made, is there for us to interact with when we jump up and tap um, the block from beneath. So this collision shape really 
needs to be focused on the bottom part of our block, like this. But that's going to cause issues if you think about it, right? Because you can also jump on top of these blocks in Mario, and if we leave it set up like this, that won't work. So to add a, another collision shape in here, what we're actually going to do, we're going to click back on our question block, we're going to click on the plus again, and we're going to actually add in a static body 2D and give that a collision shape. Whew, lots of different things going on, and we're going to want that collision shape to also be a rectangle. And this one, we don't want it to cover the bottom there because we want to make sure that the Area 2D's collision shape can access that, but we can cover the rest of it. So we can just do it like this. Do, 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 do. There we go. So now what we've got is we've got a question block. It starts out on frame one. We haven't programmed anything else to happen there. It has an Area 2D at the bottom, so we can jump up and tap it. And it has an, uh, a static body at the top, so we can stand on top of it. So that's what we've got done so far. And that is nowhere near complete. So I'm going to save this scene as question block. You can save it as whatever you like. That's what I'm doing. Um, and we want to add a script to this. So I'm going to click back on my question block root node. And then I click on the scroll with the green plus like that and yeah question block that's a fine name for this keep all of our names similar and this is what we get a very very basic script rather than me going through this line by line and typing it all out there, there's like 30 odd lines so i'm just going to copy um, my code in here and then we can talk about it so here is what we've got to start with let me zoom oops oh. I wanted to zoom out. There we go. All right, so we're going to extend our area 2D because that is the root node of our scene. So we always want to extend whatever our root node is. Now, we've got a few states and things we're going to jump into here, which I've not really gone into detail with before, but I think rather than getting bogged down in the details of this, let's just sort of walk through it generally, get it done, um, and we can always come back and explain it a bit more later. So we've got two states we're creating. One is called unbumped and one is called Bumped, that makes sense, yeah? So unbumped, the normal question block. Bumped is where it's just the, the um, sort of the other color and there's no question mark left. So we're gonna create a variable called state and it's gonna be about um, the, this uh, option where we're gonna be bumped, unbumped. We're gonna start off, that's what I'm trying to say. We will start off in an unbumped state. So we, when, when we start the game, we don't want all the question marks to be um, spent already, right? So we started off unbumped. And then we've got this original position vector too. This is just so that we can do that little animation where it like bounces up. So that's what that's in there for. We wanna know where we started, where our sprite was when we started the, the game, and then we can track that to move. So we come down to our ready function, which remember I've, I've equated that before to like our Arduino um, setup function. So this is what happens when the scene is loaded. And then our, um, we don't even have a uh, physics process function in here, which is what is more like our loop. So. Let's have a look at our ready function. We just go original position equals position. So what we're saying here is this variable we just made called original position, which is the vector two, we're setting that variable to be whatever our position is at the moment. So that gives us our initial position. We then come down and we've got our function on body entered. So this is something we need to signal, remember? So with these body functions, we need to signal those. So if I come over here to my question block and I come over to our nodes, what I want to find is this body entered one, double click on that and signal it through. And we should see some stuff happen here. There we go. So that's now been signaled through. That little green arrow with the like door, that's saying that signal is, is set up now. So what we want to do is when a body enters that area 2D, um, we want to check if the body is in the group player. So you may or may not recall, I'll just click in our player script here. In our ready function, the first thing we do for our player script is add to group player. So that's how we can make sure that we can differentiate between different things. We don't want a toad to be able to set off the question mark block or whatever. Not that they do, but um, it's just being careful. Um, and we want to make sure that we, uh, when we first enter it and the state equals unbumped, so it hasn't been bumped yet, right? So if the body is a player and the state is unbumped, then we want to run a function called bump block. What is our function called bump block? That's on the next uh, little bit. So function bump block. So we're going to say state equals uh, bumped. So now we're switching it from unbumped to bumped. We're going to grab our sprite 2D, which we haven't changed the name of, so that's perfectly fine there. And we want to change the frame to frame one. Remember we start on frame zero, we want to switch that to frame one. Then we want to do something from our global script, which we haven't done yet, but we'll do it in a minute, which is spawn beer bottle. So that's going to be a function in our global script. 
And we, what we want to do there is grab the, the global position uh, um, that we're starting with, and then we want to go uh, negative 20 on the vector. So what we want to do is make it appear above kind of thing, if that makes sense. Um, we then run the function bump upwards, which is uh, down a bit lower, but that's the one that actually makes it move. Um, then we create a timer of uh, 0.2 seconds, we let it, it run out, and then we return the block to the original position. So let's just walk through that again to make sure we understand the logic that we're trying to use, right? So we have a block, and when we start, it is unbumped. So it's going to have the question mark, it's going to be that gold color. Now, when we um, load this scene, we're going to set its position so that we know where it exists in the scene. Um, and then if a player enters that area 2D that we set up, which basically means they've jumped up and they're tapping the bottom of the block, because that's how we arrange those area 2Ds, then we check and see if it's the player, and we check and see if the block is currently unbumped. If we took this out, then you could keep bumping it and get infinite um, beer bottles, right? So we don't want that, you just get the one. So, and state is equal to unbumped, we want to run the bump block function, which is this one, which is where we swap from our unbumped to our bumped state. We then change the frame on our sprite from the unbumped sprite to the bumped sprite. We then grab this global uh, function here called spawn beer bottle and set a position for it 20 pixels above where we um, grabbed our position up here. So it, is, it appears above our thing, not in the middle of it. Um, and then we wanna run the bump upwards function, which is just down here where we just make it move slightly. And we run a little timer so it doesn't all happen instantaneously. It's, you, you can see what's going on. What is our bump upwards function? Here it is here. So we just take our Y position of that block. So our position up here, we just want the Y part of the position that we set at the start in that ready function. And we just want to move it up by 10. Um, and then we run another function called return to original position. There's probably a, a more sensible way of doing this, but this works, right? Um, and we just make it go back down to where it started. That is all we're doing in our question block script. So make sure you save that, you're gonna need it. I think maybe next we should probably go into our global function, uh, sorry, our global script and set up that um, spawn beer bottle. Right? Alrighty, so here we are in our global script. Now I'm not gonna type this out line by line because it's really hot and sweaty in here and I just wanna get out of my garage as soon as possible. So let's paste this in, all right. Function spawn beer bottle. We wanna take an argument as being the position. What are we gonna do here? Well, we're gonna start a variable it's going to be called beer bottle scene, and this is the path for it. So I'm going to make a scene shortly called beer.scene, okay? And we'll do that together. Now we want another variable called beer bottle, and that beer bottle is going to be our beer bottle scene that has been instantiated. So we need to instantiate the beer bottle scene within our bigger scene. And that is going to be controlled by this particular command. We then want to sort out the position of it here, and we're going to pass that as an argument up here and then we just want to add it as a child node of the scene that we're in so that's what that function spawn beer bottle is all about we can save that now global script next thing we probably want to do is set up our beer so the first thing i want to do is find my actual uh beer bottle uh sprite so bear with me a moment as i do that and i will drag it in for us beer bottle here we go so these sprites remember you can get them from either itch.io or github so don't be afraid to go looking for them so there's my sprite for the beer bottle let's now make that scene so we're going to click on the plus sign to create a new scene and the root node for this one i actually want to use a character body 2d so there's our character body 2d uh we're still in our global script aren't we yep cool so this character body 2d is going to need a few things we're going to want to have a sprite because we want to be able to see something that looks like a beer bottle, yeah? So we've created our sprite. Let's now click back on our inspect the menu and throw that in. So I'm going to grab my beer bottle out of my file explorer, drag it across and drop it into the texture box of our sprite 2D in our inspector. I think we should probably grab our 2D view and just see what's happening here. All right, so here is our bottle of Florex. Now we're going to need to do add a couple of things here as well. So we need it to be able to um, contact other things in the world, interact with the world around us. The main way we do that is with a collision shape. So I'm going to click on my character body 2D root node, which I think I'll rename it to beer now. Um, and then I'm going to add a child node that is a collision shape. And that collision shape we will make as a rectangle. We'll move it so it's over it. And what we actually want to do with this, we want this collision shape to be just a little bit smaller than the beer bottle itself just so we can make sure our player can actually uh, interact with it. So that's that collision shape. 
our player is not going to interact with that. That collision shape is so it can bump into walls and floors. What our player is going to do, they're going to interact through an area 2D. So click back on the beer root node, click on plus, look for an area 2D. There we go. And give that a collision shape as well. Um, and that collision shape will just be slightly larger than the one we just made. Okay, so this one is to make sure that our player can actually touch the bottle before it um, gets bounced off as if it's a normal collision. Um, now, we need to have a script set up on our beer bottle and we need to signal that area do 2D through to, 2D through to the script. Okay, so click on our root node beer, click on the adding the script thing above it. There we go, beer is a great name for the script. It gives us our character body 2D um, code, which we really don't need. Let's just delete all that for now. Um, first thing we might do, let's, yeah, let's signal that area to actually, no, that would be silly. So here is our script. Let's actually, um, I think I'll copy and paste. I reckon that's going to be the safest bet. Okay, uh, I think we've got this sorted now. Paste. All right, so let's go through this just so we understand what's happening. So we're extending our character body 2D because that's the root node. Um, we're going to set a speed of 30. You can change that. That's just how fast it's going to go along the ground, right? So if you think back to those mushies, they come like they come out of the block, then they drop down, and then they sort of run away from you. So you need some sort of speed going on. We've got a direction there of 1, um, which is going to send it to the right. Negative 1 would send it to the left. Uh, and the gravity because we want it to actually fall down. We don't want it to float away when we bounce it. Um, in our physics process, we want to run that move and slide just so there's all that natural um, movement. And then our velocity Y, so our up and down velocity, is just going to be influenced by gravity. So we just want it to fall down. And our X side to side is just going to be set to our speed, that variable we made up the top. Here is the bit that matters. All right, so we need to go back up into our uh, nodes over there, click on our area 2D, come over to our node menu over there, find body entered and signal that through. That should then signal through, there it is there. And let's just pay attention to this um, teeny tiny bit of code. So in this particular body, if it is the player that enters it, we're just gonna delete our sprite. Okay, the reason we're doing that is because we do not have enough time in this lesson to also set that um, whole power up thing working. I'll do that very soon, I promise. Um, otherwise, if it's not the player, if it's just bumped into a wall or whatever, just flip around and go the other way. So that is our code. Uh, let's save our beer scene. Let's make sure we've got our beer script saved. Now we need to go into our world uh, 2D view and add that whole thing in. So click on your 2D view, click on your world, find your question block.tscn and drag it in to your scene. Just like that. Save it. Let's run it and see if it all works. So up the top, clicking on play, start. And there it is, I should be able to jump. It'll uh, bounce, it'll spew out a 4x, let's see. There we go, and we can catch and it deletes. It is working absolutely perfectly. So as soon as I have a chance in the next couple of days, we will do the next part where we uh, work out what the beer bottle is actually gonna do, you know, making a player larger and allowing us a bit of a free hit and stuff like that. That is all for the next uh, video. So let's have a quick look at our must may might so you don't forget anything you need to do. And then you can uh, chug along and get some coding done. We move pretty quickly in this lesson. So there's a few things you need to do. So number one, you've got to create your question block uh, scene and script and your beer scene and script. You've got to edit the global script and then you've got to add your question block into your world. So those are the things that you need to do to make this work so far. Uh, you may like to use your leftover time, if you've got leftover time, who has leftover time? Not me. Um, to be creative with your design. So come up with new levels and enemies to fight and all that. Use your time wisely. Don't just wait for tutorials. Try and expand on the knowledge you've already gained. Uh, and what you might like to do is consider how collecting the bottle can make our player increase in size and all of that, because that's what we're doing in the next one. So it'd be great if you try and challenge yourself to work that out without me. Well, if you got all that done, you should now be able to bump a question mark block and it will spawn a beer bottle that you can collect. Sweet. Next time we will make it so our beer bottles give us a free hit and they increase our size and all that stuff. Sometimes really simple quotes are the best. So this one's from Jean-Paul Sartre uh, and it is, we are our choices, right? You are what you eat at the end of the day. It goes for everything. It goes for your thoughts. It goes for what you consume in terms of media. You are what you eat. We are our choices. All right, thanks guys for hanging with me. This was a pretty quick, uh, fast paced one, but thank you very much and I'll see you next time.